We are officially live. Excited to have my good friend. When was the first time that we messaged each other, Kimberly? Do you remember? I think I it was know. in 2018. Yeah, I was just getting started with my brand and everything. Mm -hmm. See, dates are easier for you on that because that's you knew when you were just getting started. And I remember yes. when you were just getting started, I was so impressed. It was like, next thing you know, like you're already working on a book and then <laughs> you're already working on a podcast. and. Oh. Launching this and launching that. And, you know, I always call you the massive action taker because you're just always finding ways to do something, even if you're doing it messy, like you do it. And then it doesn't even seem messy to me. I'm like the one I feel like mine is like messy. Like my first, I think my first 10 podcasts were all with my phone in my closet with a raspy voice because I have lost my voice. <laughs> You gotta get it done, man. That's okay. I know I you just it. do it, yeah. but I thought, you know what? If I just do it later, it's a story. It's a story of telling people, like yeah. you know, you just because I was. I don't know if you knew this, but I was the massive overthinker in the sense of not taking action. My my first book, The Game of Networking, it says it took me seven years, but by the time it got published, it took me eight years. What? I know. I didn't know that. Yeah, eight years. So oh now, obviously, it's been like six books and. <laughs> Two and a half years. Now people are like, whoa, slow down. You can take a little bit longer. One, one extreme and then the other extreme. So tell us, you have two That's books, awesome. right? How many podcast mm -hmm. episodes? Like, like give us give us a little of the the quick uh quick recap on all the incredible accomplishments right here. Just pretend like it's you and me, nobody else is listening. Oh my gosh. I'm begging you, I'm begging you. Please tell me you've got books and podcasts and I know you've got insane amount of downloads and courses and all the good stuff. Tell us. Yes. So I got into mark, uh, network marketing in 2017 and I met you when I was coming up my, my first full year. And actually that fall, if you guys haven't read it, is it turning one into a thousand? How's it go? Yeah. It was how did it was it was how to recruit one and turn it into a thousand. Yep. One okay. To a thousand. That book was it. It was digital. That was one of the first yeah. ones I stumbled upon where I was like, oh, it's about building relationships and caring about people. And because I was like spamming everyone because that's what I was told to do. And then so I was totally hooked. I started following all your stuff and just like put me in. Right. I want to learn. How, I want to learn how to do do it. I got into your membership program. And um, you reached out in, in 2018. You're just like, wow, like you're really showing up. So I want to thank you because when I launched, um, I think I wrote my second book, um, but it was my first network marketing book. You interviewed me and it really allowed me to start to get out there and make connections. So thank you. But you've always been such a big mentor to me. Like I watch you and I'm like, OK, like he's doing all the things. So, yes, I have. I'm writing my sixth book right now. It'll be out <clears throat> next, I think, month month after this, um, when I was in network marketing, I reached um, number two globally as a recruiter, um, top half percent of the company, but I was able to do it through what, you know, everything that you teach. So how do you offer value, be really consistent, show up, which we're actually going to get into al algorithm hacks today, you guys. So I see you guys popping on. Um, just let me know on a scale of one to 10 where you're at with algorithm and engagement. Like it is dropped for all of us about 30, 35% year over year because there's so many more ads and reels and all the things. So scale one to 10, put it in the comments. One is like your engagement is just like the poop emoji. And 10 is like, no, it's on fire. Like I could teach this. But through what I'm going to talk to you guys about today, I was able to build my brand, the Gold Digger Girl, um, to be able to, to reach over a million people per month on all the social plan channels. Because I did your mastermind. You remember when you talked about taking one piece of content and getting it all out there? Like, I was like taking notes. I'm like, okay, so I can go live, turn it into a blog post and turn it into a podcast. So I was able to build the Gold Digger Girl brand and have the podcast and the network marketing. But what I found out is that I absolutely love teaching. Like God gave me the spiritual gift of encouragement. Like I can see in people what they can't see. And I, I have this ability to give people bite size little action steps they can take now that are going to get them results. So I rolled out a full coaching program. And so that's what I do full time now. And I absolutely love it. And my favorite thing in the whole wide world is social media. Absolutely. Well, we're going to dive right into social media. All I right. got a couple couple questions. That's going to be our teaser for us. And we're actually doing this exactly what Kimberly's talking about. We talked about this in the mastermind. We focus on one platform and then after you repurpose that so you could be listening right now on the podcast you could be watching on a facebook live uh you could be watching on youtube 
uh, or you could be reading some of these hacks inside of a blog post because yeah. eventually, right, you create one piece of content and you might as well be everywhere. Why not? Because mm -hmm. you never know who's going to find it, when they're going to find it, how they're going to find it. So a uh, couple of questions real quick before we really get into the algorithm, which I think is important right now because a lot of people are just panicking, especially in the last week. People are just yeah. freaking out that things are down. Yeah. Most people don't know this. You have gone 100% generic. You're not part of any company. Mm -hmm. uh, love all the companies, cheering everybody on. Yes. But uh, <laughs> I think that's there's no right or wrong. I've got a lot of friends that are in companies and coaching and other people that are completely generic like you and me and you know, I talk to Coach Fryer and Darren Kidd and Frazier every single day. Uh, and so that's, I just think, important to understand because to some people, that's what they look for. For other people, that isn't. There's Again, there is no right or wrong. It just is what it is. And so for you, I guess the first question is, is what made you feel called or what made you decide to go 100% generic and focus not on the building. Cause I know I always got that question. It was almost like, well, I don't get it. Oh, like yeah. you're so passionate about network marketing. Now, why are you generic and, and not yeah. building anymore? Oh, that's such a good question. Yeah. So I'm sure I'm new to a lot. I put new in the comments. If you've never seen me before, Kimberly Olson, the gold digger girl, I would love to say hello to you. So if you don't know my story, I struggled with alcoholism for over a decade. <clears throat> when I had my daughters, they were one and two total hot mess. And so I, I worked with a therapist to overcome it. And in that process, I realized that all I had to do was trust God. And that's my business plan, you guys. Like I, I just passed a little over $5 million in revenue in four years. And I don't have a business plan. Like that's kind of like weird. And so what I do is I just trust and I'm obedient. And so when he tells me to do something, I do it, even though I'm really scared. So recently, I, I actually had my first conference in, in September. And once I got the, you know, I was like, okay, we've got speakers lined up and all the things he was like, okay, I need you to go bigger. And I'm like, what do you mean bigger? Like that's a multiple six figure investment. He's like, I need you to get in front of more people. I'm like, how I'm on social media, I'm doing the reels. And so what he said is he said, I need you to be able to get on other stages. I need you to get in front of other teams because obviously when you're in a team, there's a conflict of interest there. And it was really scary for me to make that decision. And I was pretty upset about it, but I was like, okay, I'm just, you know, I'm just a vessel. So I made that decision and I'm really, really like grateful that um, I'm able to be in a place where I can do that and, and just get to fully, fully focus on coaching and, and being able to work with everybody. Well, we're excited to have you. I think you. Uh, everyone would agree. I'm saying this as a compliment that the industry needs more uh, female coaches. I'm saying mm -hmm. that in like genuine all the time. I mean, this is a 200 plus billion dollar profession uh, as many coaches people think they know in reality, I don't know many that can list more than 20 that really focus on this. And let's say that the case is 2020 in a $200 billion profession. Right. So I think, especially when we got 80% are women, I think it's so, so important. And for me, you know, I'm a, I'm a master collaborator. I, I truly, yes, you are. <laughs> I, I don't, I truly believe collaboration is the new competition. I know people yeah. say that and it sounds cliche, but I actually show it based on yeah. The people that I promote and the friends that I promote. And so always excited to do that. So everyone wants to know, let's, let's talk a little bit about what's going on right now with the algorithm, what people yeah. can do so that they don't panic. And also I think, so they have a focus because they hear this and then they hear that and they hear this and then they hear that and they're all over the place. And then a lot of people just get overwhelmed and they never ever start because they feel like they're missing out on what's the latest and greatest. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear because I actually haven't heard. I want to hear some of your latest and greatest things that you've learned because I know you're yeah. always staying up to date. And so for me, I'm paying attention as well learning. Awesome. I love it. So if you guys have noticed, obviously, there's a decline right now. And we have to remember like Facebook. I mean, I, I just got a, an email that from my ads team. They're like, hey, we want you to make a reel specifically for a Facebook ad because now you can do Facebook ads with Reels. So I was like, okay, so here we are shifting again. Well, what does that mean? They're looking for more ways to monetize the platform. More people are leaving Facebook, going to TikTok. So what happens is, is as a platform, they have to make money. So we're going to be seeing more and more ads in the feed, just beautifully blended in. But if you actually look and scroll, don't do it now, you'll see a couple of, of your friends posts and then an ad. So what's what's happening now is we are competing even more than ever before with ads. And so that organic content, it's even harder to get in front of people. The other thing to keep in mind, you guys, 
is that these platforms, they want reels. They want you doing the, the video. So us doing this live, obviously you all know you should go live and do all that. But what's something easy that you can do now? It is to play to the play into the platform. What do they want? They want you doing reels. They want you doing them every day. So like Rob, like you were saying, you know what? You get excited. You're like, yeah, I'm doing a reels challenge. Whoop, whoop. And then it's the challenge is done. And then two weeks go by and you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't done a reel in two weeks. The, the consistency is going to be your best friend in this process, just like it, it always has has been. And I, I believe Instagram just flipped their feed where, you know, before when you posted on Instagram a picture, there was a caption. You could see that as you're scrolling. Yeah. They've pushed, bumped it out now where all it is is the image or the reel. So you can't even see the caption. So that means that we have to look for ways to storytell in our video even more than before. I think back, I don't even know if you share this story or not, uh, you crushed on social media when you had months where you couldn't even talk because you lost your voice. <laughs> I, I, you got to tell that story because that's like the most powerful, Ooh. like show them, don't just tell them. Yeah, that was last year. I lost my voice and it is our moneymaker, obviously the company. Um, I've had people tell me it was, you know, it was the enemy attacking. I mean, what's the one thing he can take away, right? My voice. And I said, I'm not, you're not going to hold me back. So we had to repurpose like crazy. We produced two YouTubes a week and two podcasts a week purely by repurposing old content. It was crazy. Um, but then obviously TikTok reels, uh, we've been able to build to, we get about a quarter of a million dollar or a quarter of a million views per month on just reels. So it was able to say, well, I can't talk. Uh, at the time. So I'm going to be able to story tell through sound bites. So Gary Vee, we, we all know him as like a rock star when it comes to, to content and being very cutting edge. Well, if you watch Gary Vee a year ago, two years ago, what was he doing? Micro content. So watch the stories, watch what he's doing. And that's all it is, is micro content y'all is literally whoever gets this right now in this conversation and does it is going to make more money than they've ever made before. People are digesting content in very short period. You guys right here that are sticking with us, you guys are above average. Okay. It's, we get five seconds, 10 seconds to be able to tell your story, network marketing opportunity, how your product is different and something you've overcome in 10 to 15 seconds is an art that you have to, to develop but that is literally how people are digesting content. And we want, we have to remember to play, you know, play the game. Like that's where our audience is at. It's, it's always important to understand, like you pointed out earlier, that these platforms are actually competing. So mm -hmm. when lives first came out, you know, had Facebook competing with YouTube and they were competing for the live audience. And then when stories came out, they were competing with Snapchat. Yeah. Right. And then when reels came out, it's competing with TikTok. Mm -hmm. So it's a big, big battle that's going on with social media yeah. and these different platforms for your attention. And they understand that for people, right? They find something new. And each time something's improved with a different thing and, and different generations as well. And so seeing that, whatever the newest thing that's the most promoted is something that you can do. But I would encourage you not to overthink it as you're starting mm -hmm. just start just commit yeah. to whether it's a post every day or it's a reel every day even if they aren't good you're going to learn as you go you're going to psychologically you start to become consciously aware and you start paying attention you're like oh i saw how they did this and the answer to that and they did the caption here and they you know they did the captions right um as you speak or maybe it was in different motivational or you start doing things but what are ways for you as you're so you're very quick at learning, you're a quick study. Uh, you see something and then you go write a book or you create a <laughs> podcast or you create a course on it, right? When Clubhouse was hot, you had a course yeah. right away on it. So mm -hmm. how how are you? Because I believe the ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. How are you such a quick study and how can some of these people that are listening in right now paralyze how can they get unparalyzed unstuck and really start to to learn a little bit quicker oh this is so good so over you know over analyzing stinking thinking or just really feeling overwhelmed overwhelm is just like a subconscious mind cop out that's giving you an excuse like we all have a gazillion things going on so what's worked really well for me is when i learn something new so when I obviously clubhouse the voice it wasn't really driving after some time <laughs> when my voice started getting stronger Q Q1 I was like audio rooms those are those are kind of new like at first everybody didn't have them 
And I kid you not, I was like, okay, I'm going to learn audio rooms. So I scheduled an audio room for Monday after my normal live I do every week. I had never been in an audio room. Like I hadn't even been in one. I was like, no, I'm just going to figure it out. So I clicked the button and everyone's on there and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And so I just taught, you know, started talking, people were commenting. It was on my wall so I could see that. But what was so great is that I gave myself permission to not have it all together to not figure it out. And you know what that helps with building up the no like and trust factor is that those that came into that audio room that first time, they got to experience that imperfection with me. And one, they loved me even more because I was a real person. I am a real person, but two, I gave them permission to not be perfect. Hmm. That Instagram model, all that stuff that, that used to be what we wanted years ago is not what people want. They want real, they want original content. So with your algorithm and as you're thinking about, okay, what can I do different when I do audits? And I know some of you put me in the comments, if this is you, and if you're listening, you can just be thinking how many of you are guilty of sharing memories on your wall or sharing other people's reels, or maybe it's something you saw on CNN. You're like, Oh, I got to share this. Or like Debbie's garage sale, like original <laughs> content, original content, because people come to your wall, your profile to see you. And when we can own that and, and stand in power to go, oh, yeah, OK, I'm building relationships with the other people on the cell phone, then you start to realize the magic is in the original content. Then it's going to challenge you to be committed to creativity. It's going to challenge you every day to have a marketer's lens on. By the way, Rob, when he's with his kids, he doesn't like take a picture of his family and then go write a post. I've seen him in action. I've, I've met his family. He's with them in the moment, takes the picture and he writes the post later. So this isn't to be working all the time. This is so you can actually work less, but start to have a marketer lens in what you're doing. And oh, I could grab a picture of that or I could turn that into a reel or a story and you do it later. Debbie's yeah. gross. Sorry, Debbie. I don't know where that came from. Oh, that's uh, that's so true. <laughs> what um, With the people that struggle with what to post and where to find content, I know for me, you know, like you said, I would jot down ideas and I created a little notepad in my, in my Evernote that I use. And it was like, anytime a, an idea came and sometimes I look back through it when I need inspiration, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a good one. Or sometimes like, that's awful. I can't believe I wrote that. Other times I started, I remember I would screenshot whether it was a live or what was a post or now even a reel. And then of course you're not going to plagiarize. I would make it my own but that would help give me inspiration and ideas so that I could learn from other people and yeah. what they were doing as they were going. And then the last thing I did was I would do an analysis. So I would go back through my last 30 posts and see the, whether it's lives, posts, whatever it is, reels, and look at the five that got the most engagement and the mm. five that got the least. They're all me. Yep. But what does my audience connect with the most? And that would give me perspective and insights. It's like, I got to do like a little survey on what worked and didn't work. And uh, the last thing on that is, it's like you said, it's just, once I was consistent, it did help me put that creative lens on because it was like, oh, I got another one coming tomorrow. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I'm doing <laughs> blue, right. I better start paying attention. So yes. it, it woke me up. So what yeah. are what are some of your ideas to help people to create better content is I know it's the fear of judgment, right? Like people. Oh, oh totally. Yeah. I love how you said permission to not be the best writer permission, you Being know, perfect. to go through some mistakes at the beginning. I love that. Yeah. There's so many things I have. Um, I have a Trello board. I can get it to you guys if you want it. And it's basically maps out your content and I teach, um, and I didn't invent this. I'm sure someone else came up with this, but really five themes of content. And for Instagram, I know you say three and I, I love that. Like keep it simple if you're on Instagram, I'm guessing most of you are on Facebook, five types of content, themes of content. So you can start, and I call them branding buckets, but you think, okay, this bucket is a personal bucket, making sure you're taking selfies sometimes. And it's not being vain. People need to see your face to have that emotional connection. So it's reminding yourself, okay, now we're not taking a selfie and doing like a glamour shot. Oh, I'm so cute today. No, what we're going to do is we're going to share a story. And what's really powerful about this is we take them on the journey from struggle to success. So for example, um, I, I did a post uh, talking about, oh, I was featured in a magazine. And instead of showing me featured in the magazine, oh, I'm so cool, right? This is what we hashtag blessed we do. I took a picture of me with the magazine and I said, it's crazy to think that I struggled for uh, writing and reading 
for years. Like I, like it was a thing and it was an identity thing too, because I struggled in school. You know what it's like when you struggle in school and I write every day and I read a book a week. And I shared that with people. Do you know how many comments I had of people going, oh my gosh, like I struggle. I always thought I was a bad singer and now I sing in my church choir. So we tell the struggle, bring them along in the success. So we always have a bit of a silver lining, but these buckets remind you, oh, how many of you, like, you're like, oh my gosh, I never tell people I have a network marketing company, right? Like, you're like, I don't even remember the last time because you're so afraid of being Spamala Pamela, coined by Rob Sperry, but you're so afraid of that, that you don't even tell people. What if you said, hey, I'm actually looking for, uh, to partner and take five, five people under my wing to personally coach them, mentor them, teach them how to build a business and develop them into leaders. I'm looking for five people to work with the next six months. Are, would you like to take a look at that? You could all do that today. So it reminds us of, okay, what's the things I need to make sure I keep on the forefront to round out my social presence? And if you haven't figured that out yet, that's your homework. Because what's the point? What are you going to do? Just post to post? Like we have to remember, we want to get people into our world mm -hmm. and then obviously nurture the relationship and eventually close sales. That's great. So I'm just thinking of questions. I try to think back to like, if I were in the trenches or I were at the beginning and I were building questions that I would ask. And I think one of the questions I would have, because I love how you always give very specific plans of do this, 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 this. I know that's how your brain works. And I love that, like break things down into steps because it simplifies everything. So if you were to give someone, and I know it can vary depending on someone's level, let's say someone's more of a intermediate and you were to give them a daily method of operation for social media. And I know some tasks are weekly, not daily, um, depending on the individual, but if you were to give either both or a combo of that for someone who's intermediate, but says, you know what, like, I really, I got to hit that incentive trip. I got to hit that rank advancement. I got to make it happen. What would you give as maybe like that, that list or steps? Yeah. To do? Oh, this is easy. Okay. So we, cause what we do is we have these daily activity lists, our demo that have like 50 things on them. And yeah, hopefully we can, we can check all the boxes. What works for me. Um, and when I'm working with clients is three non-negotiables every day. First thing you're going to do, and you teach this in every single book you write and every live training you do, is connection. And so we're, we're specifically connecting for outbound friend requesting. But why is this important? We're looking for who we want to work with. So you don't want to just friend request whoever. You want to specifically go find someone that you've loved working with, and you're going to look at their friends, right? And you know what's really cool, you guys? I'm going to challenge you to do this. 20 outbound friend requests for, like, say, give it like two weeks straight. Watch what happens. You're going to start becoming a suggested friend. And so you're going to start getting inbound friend requests of people you want to work with. It's crazy when it happens, but that's actually beating the algorithm. So every single day, it's new connections, okay? New followers on, on Instagram, mm -hmm. TikTok, wherever you are. Outbound friend requests. You've got to build your network. Obviously, this is the theme of where we are. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to you know, bring up and connect with those people and expose them. So this is why I don't give scripts because it, it just doesn't feel right to people. And I was actually just on a coaching call and this is what the girl said. We'll call her, uh, we'll call her Jane. My friend requested Jane and I said, Jane, I'm so excited to connect with you, get to know you, um, have a great week. So we just put, we just put Jane into the, in the friend zone. What we want to do instead is say, Jane, thanks for the friend request. Hey, I, I checked out your profile and I noticed. I checked out your profile. Oh my gosh, I'm also a runner. And you know, I'm from Michigan. I live in Texas now. Like I'd love to get to know you better. Tell me a bit about yourself. So what we want to do is we want to be real. We want to go check out their stuff and find a connection. If, if I'm friending someone and I have nothing to connect with, it's not my avatar. There's a clue. So these new friends should be people that you can connect with. And when Jane tells me about herself, you know what I say? Jane, that's so awesome. I actually work with women just like you. I work with nurses just like you. I work with moms just like you. Um, actually, and depending, obviously, if you're leading with the product or business, you can shift this. But it can be, hey, you know, I work with nurses just like you. I teach uh, teach them how to build a business on the side, you know, from in the nooks and crannies of their day from their cell phones. Have you ever thought about doing something like that? And now I have exposed her. I've told her what I do. I connected with her. She doesn't feel like I'm spamming her. So every day, rinse and repeat, I am like, that's what I would do. And then the third thing I would do is follow up like a boss. And what I mean by that is, no, you're not going to be like, so Jane, did you watch the video? Did you watch hmm. the video? None of that. You're like, hey, Jane, guess what? I, this, I just found out, you know, one of my 
other nursing friends. She just put in her notice at her job. And I wanted to see if I could, I could share her story with you because it reminded me of you. I thought it would inspire you. Let me know if I can send that over to you. Like you're specifically having reasons to follow up. So if every day, if you were just like, what am I supposed to be doing? Connecting with new people, telling them what you do and following up. That's great. And I love with the, the follow up, how you're not just asking the question because right. you want to guide and lead the conversation. Yeah. You don't want to leave it open ended. You never know where they're going to go. And so when you lead and guide that conversation, it can help make a huge, huge difference. And then I also like how part of that DMO is getting people in the income producing activities because mm -hmm. it's so easy for people to be on the squirrel patrol right? And not be oh, delivered sure. on social media. We get yeah. on, right? And after we get yeah. on, it's like, we're on, we're on, we're on. And we're just like, all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay. 30 minutes have gone by and you haven't been deliberate with your time. Now that's okay if you've allocated specific times where you're not working and it's just, you know, vegging a little bit, yeah. you know, having your outlet. That's completely different. Don't feel guilt for that. We're just talking about when you've dedicated time for work, work, be deliberate on social media, become more of a producer and less of a consumer because too many of us are just consumers and not producers. And part of being the producer is not just producing the content, but also is, yes, shifting to the DM, shifting to Messenger, where we can have these personal conversations with people. Well, Kimberly, what's next? You're now 100% generic. You're not building in any network marketing company. Uh, you're going all out on this. I know this has been for you, something you've been passionate about coaching for a long time. And now it's like the, the feet were in the pool and now you just decided to go do a flip <laughs> off of the diving board Pretty into much. the pool. So what's next? Like, tell us what's oh. next. Tell us some of the big plans, the secret sauce plans. Yes. So I am going to be working with leaders to teach them uh, what you teach, you know, exactly on alignment with what you teach of how can we build value and elevate this industry? Because I know leaders want that. They're like, I want more for my team. I want to be able to just show up in a different way, but they don't know how, because they've been doing it a certain way and they kind of lucked out a little bit. And now they're like, okay, how do I, how do I duplicate what I'm doing? And they, they're finding some blocks there. So working with leaders, that's absolutely what I want to do raise up the next generation of leaders in this industry and make it where we are so proud of what we do. And we're just allowing people to create exactly what they want in a way that feels in alignment with who they are. And just, and just giving this opportunity to people in a way, in a new way that they're hearing it in a different way because everybody's so open now with everything that's happened. Let's take it. Let's really maximize that. That's great. I love it. And that's like the bigger macro perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at it and I don't know. I love what I do. Like my wife asks mm -hmm. all the time and never knew what I wanted to be when I grow up, when, when I grew up growing <laughs> up and now it's like, I just see myself doing this in 10, 15, 20 years because yeah. it's just fun. I've always loved mm -hmm. coaching and working with people and seeing their breakthroughs and make things happen. And I'm excited to collaborate much more with you on how we can help this profession and level things up. So Kimberly, thanks so much for coming on. I appreciate you. And I know we'll be doing several more of these and keep crushing it. And I can't wait for your next book to come out. Thank you.